My name is Harold Gibson. I'm a professor within the Arkwell School of Earth Sciences. And my job this morning is to introduce the VMS thematic project uh, entitled Crust Mantle Processes Responsible for VMS Endowment During the Evolution of Archean Greenstone Belts. This project was conceived in 2019, moved forward in late 2019, just in time to be uh, affected by COVID-19. So a lot of what we're presenting today is really an introduction to the projects, to the team, but there'll be some initial results from a couple of the presentations. Uh, it's a bit of a tag team effort, a bit like a wrestling match in a way. And uh, so you just bear with me, there'll be about five speakers follow me and please save your questions until, uh, or at least uh, vocalize your questions until the, uh, the last uh, uh, pre presentation. So the project was developed collaboratively with projects from, from academia and government, namely, uh, Patrick Mercier Langevin from the Geological Survey of Canada, uh, Jacob Hanley from St. Mary's University, Steve Pierce from Memorial University, Thomas Monarchy from the Colorado School of Mines, Mark Hannington from the University of Ottawa, Meg Stewart from the Mount Royal University, and Pierre Simon Ross from INRS. And uh, these are the main PIs and the projects moving forward. So we recognize that we have a fairly robust model for VMS deposits, but that's really based on deposit to district scale research. That has limitations. The model does not address why geologically similar volcanic centers, assemblages within greenstone belts or greenstone belts themselves have such variable VMS endowment. The differential base and precious metal endowment of assemblages within the Abitibi greenstone belt, and there is a tremendous variation in VMS endowment, suggests there are fundamental differences in assemblage scale tectonic, magmatic, and crust mantle process that impact metal endowment during greenstone belt construction. The thematic research will address this differential endowment at the assemblage scale through three integrated and complementary projects that provide a quantitative comparison using defined geological attributes of a volcanic assemblages in the well, but variably of VMS endowed Abitibi greenstone belt with comparisons to less endowed belts, such as the Ottoman Toshota. It builds on and complements metal earth transect, craton, and metal ocean research. And there'll be a lot of collaboration with the metal ocean research team. And the results that Mark presented uh, yesterday are really going to influence how we approach some of the compilation within the Abitibi. So some, first we'll look at some of the questions that the thematic projects will address. The first one is, can assemblage scale attributes and pre-deformation palimpsestic reconstructions identify unique combinations of geological events, processes, or conditions that correlate with VMS endowment, allow us to compare with the modern ocean floor, and perhaps provide new insights into our key and tectonics and VMS model metallogeny. Project one has three uh, sub-projects. 1A is an assemblage level compilation or reconstruction of Abitibi belt, and that would be, that would be introduced by Taus Jorgens in the RA. Uh, I'm in charge of that project, and you may recognize Taus. He was the uh, research associate uh, responsible for the excellent work done on the Naranda transect. Uh, project 1B is a geochemical and petro petrogenic evolution of the Abitibi greenstone belt. And that's, uh, that, uh, re that project will be introduced by Pierre Simon Ross and Octavio Vitt. Uh, then we move on to the nature of assemblage boundaries and a sedimentary sub province volcanism. Jack Simmons in RA, we just, he's, sitting, he's residing in Australia, waiting to get here. We hope he'll arrive sometime in May, we can get this project going. And uh, so we won't be talking about that today, but we can certainly answer some questions about it if you have them in, in later in the, in the presentation. The second question really relates to project two. Does the VMS endowment of volcanic assemblages or parts, parts thereof and differences in the tiny grade and trace metal, specifically gold contact, content reflect very subtle variations in the maturity of the crust, which really have not been recognized in whole rock and in isotopic work or in uranium lead ge geochronological studies where the emphasis has been on determining crystallization ages and really not looking for inheritance. Uh, this project is, uh, was, was inspired by Thomas. There will be a, uh, a research associate hired in, the, in May and we will we'll, we'll gladly talk about it during the question period, but it won't be introduced any further in this presentation, Thomas was not available today. Now the, the third question, the race to uh, project three are, are VMS deposits in, are VMS endowed assemblages characterized by magmas that were metal rich 
prior to eruption with the metals available via direct magmatic hydrothermal processes or subsequently through leaching within subsea floor hydrothermal systems. There's, there's uh, two parts to this project. 3A is looking at the pre-eruption metal content, temperature and oxidation of state of magmas. And Priyal Dea and, and Jacob Hanley will talk about some of the melt inclusion work that's been, done, that's been initiated that uh, they'll introduce that project and some of the results that they've got so far. And Steve Piercy will talk about using heavy minerals as proxies for igneous processes immediately following that. The last question is, can the trace element composition of BMS ores, a fingerprint conditions of ore formation and the source of metals that may be correlated with assembly scale endowment? Uh, Dave Decrup, uh, our research associate working with Mark Hannington will introduce this uh, project. So without uh, further ado, I'll turn it over, to, I'll stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Tom's house to move ahead. And again, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat box or save them until the end. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Taos Janssen, and I was uh, previously with uh, the Noranda transect and uh, have now jumped ship to, uh, to the BMS thematic project, where I will be mainly focusing on the assemblage level compilation and reconstruction of the epitopic greenstone belts, so what we call Project 1A. Um, yeah, first, uh, I'd just like to recognize our uh, project research and funding partners. And then a quick outline here, uh, I'll, I'll just restate the research questions and objectives, and then I'll give you sort of a sense of, of, the, of the compilation work that's going on right now, what that entails. Um, and then I'll give you an example or a taste of this sort of assembly assemblage questions that, that we uh, that we uh, want to ask that hopefully can inform us on the on the differential metal endowment and then I'll give an example of of the methodology um, from Ruin Miranda and then a comment on future work so the research questions uh, is sort of what Harold just alluded to, uh, how do assembled scale tectonic magmatic and cross mantle processes impact metal endowment uh, during greenstone belt uh, construction. And the objectives for, for project 1A is to isolate the differences between, oh sorry, in general, we want to isolate the differences between richly endowed and poorly endowed assemblages and specifically for project 1A, we want to do a comprehensive review and compilation of the relevant representative geological data at the assembled scale uh, and try and quantify these geological features. Um, and I've just put this uh, slide, uh, this figure up here from Maneke it all 2017 to show this differential metal endowment uh, across the, the um, different volcanic assemblages in the TB. And uh, as you can see, um, the structural rock model, for example, is a good example of something that's uh, unendowed, um, whereas Lake River uh, has been very prolific when it comes to BMS uh, formation. So the compilation work, uh, the way I've sort of decided to uh, address it initially ha has been to use the GSC bedrock tools, uh, which uh, maybe I should switch this to make uh, final, which was uh, you know published uh, by the Ge Geological Survey of Canada, and uh, I owe some thanks here to Etienne and Gabriel for recompiling. Um, the, uh, the the bedrock tool uh, for the newest version of RGIS, uh, but this this tool sort of allows us to to uh, make the compilation in RGIS and also capture a lot of the metadata uh, that might be of interest later on. Um, so so a lot of sort of the the area estimates of, of the different geological features is something that that we then would hopefully be easy would be able to easily calculate. Um, in like using RGIS um, along with this GSC bedrock tool. Uh, so, for, so for uh, for the uh, sort of the large scale episode compilations, uh, that there are already uh, uh, some very nice uh, compilations out there. Uh, Thurston's two thousand and eight, and then just recently. Um, uh, Dubai and Rochelangevin uh, came out with, with, the, with 
with the updated version here. So these are these are some of the the compilations that we're using to to first sort of get our overall uh, assemblage um, scale map going uh, before we start putting in some of the geological features that we're interested in. So on a finer scale here, uh, when we start looking at, at some of the ge geological features that we're interested in, uh, we're going to be using Shishem uh, on the Quebec side and the, the MNDM uh, publications on the Ontario side. Uh, here, the, the, there seems to be a bit of a scale difference where the Quebec geologists like to map at 1 to 20,000, which is, of course, very nice when you're starting to look at some of the nitty-gritty geological features, uh, whereas a lot of the mapping done on the on the Ontario side is 1 to uh, 100,000 or 1 to uh, 50,000. So there might be some issues there going forward, but, um, but hopefully that's something that we can resolve. And then, of course, we also want to include uh, new mapping uh, from from Metal Earth, uh, which have, you know, produced some, some very with new results and updates to these uh, these maps. Uh, we saw Pierre Bedeau present some stuff uh, from the Sibunu area, uh, RAS in the Swayze area, and uh, and Tom Gamble have uh, have made uh, considerable updates to the Swayze area as well, and, and so on. So there's a lot of stuff there also to integrate. So so sort of uh, so so what we are interested in is. As a set, uh, the volcanic assemblages. So this is just sort of the, uh, the assemblages that we're going to focus on, uh, probably focusing on the Blake River group uh, uh, first. Uh, and these are some of the things that we can we can sort of me measure or, or quantify. So we, we want to look at time thickness, area, and eventually volume. Uh, and then a lot of the different uh, geological features uh, within each assemblage, so like sim volcanic intrusions of of various uh, um, uh, compositions, uh, also you know uh, coherent volcanic rocks versus uh, uh, volcanic clastic rocks, and so on. Magma affinity. Some of this will tie into uh, to some of the other uh, projects uh, that you will hear about later on. And of course, structures um, is also going to be an important part. Many more. Uh, so this is just to give you sort of a taste of, of the questions that we have in mind uh, that these things can can, can answer. Uh, so, you know, is there a quantifiable relationship between total area volume of mafic and felsic volcanic rocks uh, and the number of VMS deposits, gold fish, VMS deposits, metal tenor and tonnage? Uh, we can answer similar questions uh, with respect to sim volcanic TGG intrusions and then also are there any sort of quantifiable spatial associations between some of these geological features and uh, the VMS, VMS uh, deposits? Uh, and, and we can do that with in assemblages. Uh, and we can also uh, ask similar questions between assemblages. So is there a relationship between total assemblage area volume relative to other assemblages and VMS endowment? Uh, are there significant differences in the, in the uh, relative area uh, slash volume of volcanic rocks of different magmatic affinity, a volume of sim volcanic TGG intrusions, and so on, uh, between endowed and less endowed areas. And, uh, and, and these kind of questions hopefully will, will inform us on the, on the sort of differential metal endowment that, that we observe in the attitude. So to give you a quick example, uh, I, I want to go to, um, to the Rune Randa camp where we have done some work that is similar to what the envision will be, uh, be done now on, on the sort of assembly scale. So I should stress here that uh, when, when we get down the line to, to make comparisons to the modern uh, C4 and you know the, the, the maps that um, Mark's group have produced, uh, this is not a scale that, that would allow for comparison, I think, at least at, at, at this stage. Uh, so this is like a, a finer scale within the Miranda camp that, that allows this. So, here you just see a, a map of the Rana camp. You have the Porcupine Desta Fault uh, to the north and the Lotto Lake Cadillac Fault to the south. Uh, Mafic rocks are in green, Felsic rocks in yellow. The sim volcanic intrusions in, in, the, in the camp are in, in pink here. And you can see uh, 
all the VMS deposits are are sort of here in the central part uh, of the camp um, with you know a, a couple of of, uh, of deposits uh, in other parts and the and the two gold rich VMS deposits the 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 cumin and horn are sitting down here uh, the the map has been divided into areas. So you have area one here, area two here, area three here, area four here, and area five here. And these uh, areas have been divided uh, mainly uh, by these uh, sort of major syn volcanic uh, faults that you see in black. So they sort of follow follow those. And across these faults, uh, you know, the strategic is a little bit less uh, less unknown like from, from one side to another. So that, that's sort of the division we have done before starting to, uh, to start quantifying uh, these different uh, geologic features. So, so we have sort of looked at the sim volcanic intrusions, the felsic volcanic rocks, mafi volcanic rocks, and then also uh, I should mention that the blue here is sort of sim, sim, uh, sim volcanic, uh, sort of more mafi di diorite uh, gabbro intrusions. Uh, and of course, also uh, we put the defaults and and then and the, uh, the metal endowment. So, so here you see uh, sort of uh, an area analysis uh, done in image J for each of these area area. So essentially, uh, if you look at the first row here, this is felsic volcanic rocks uh, that in, in in these images are colored. Uh, in red uh, by this image analysis, uh, and then a calculation of sort of the, the percent area that, that the felsic volcanic rocks are taking up within each area. So you can see here there's some variability up in the north area. We have around 2% felsic volcanics, uh, whereas in area three and four, we are seeing so 14 and 25 is the highest in, the, in area four. And we can do the same thing with these other features. Um, the uh, mafic to the volcanic rocks, sim volcanic TGG intrusions, and diuretic and gaproic intrusions, and, and get sort of a, a, a number of each. <clears throat> so if we have a table here of the of these different features, uh, it also includes uh, the, the ore in million tons, uh, the gold gold content, uh, the gold grade of, of the of the deposits within. Within uh, within these uh, deposits, or within the ore, within these uh, different blocks, and then um, we've also sort of calculated. And I should have mentioned that the the Naranda transect, as we saw, is plotted there. So for the Naranda camp, what we did was we uh, we sort of uh, we just uh, measured or accounted the number of the uh, of faults that was intersected by the transect, and then that gave us sort of a fault density uh, along the transect. Uh, so we might have to modify that when we are looking at an, an area uh, down the road to, to get a, a calculation for that. And then of course, all the, the, the different uh, rock types uh, here. So just from that, we can see that area three and four are characterized by a higher metal content, density of structures, and porosity of felsic volcanic rocks and sim volcanic intrusions. And, and uh, also that area four has the largest deposits, highest gold grade, and number of ounces. So there seems to be a correlation established already uh, by doing this exercise. So uh, the ongoing work right now on the, uh, the assembly scale is uh, to continue compilation work. So that is gonna be, uh, like that, that is the dominant uh, part of the, of the work right now. And then also try and establish the features that best allows for a comparison across assemblages. Uh, we all know that there's, uh, you know, the coverage of the different assemblages is not the same uh, on, many, on many levels. Uh, so that's something that we need to take into consideration. Um, what makes a good comparison in the first place. Um, and then later on, uh, it's the idea to make a construction of the synthesis uh, in 3D, uh, in a 3D model, and then also a panspastic restoration, uh, which would allow to calculate volumes and then, um, you know, 
if you remember one of Mark's slides from yesterday, try and, and get sort of a, a, an eruption rate, and then you know from that induce some sort of cross of growth. So we can start making these comparisons with the modern environments uh, that Middle Ocean sports on. And I think that's about it for me. Hello, I'm uh, Pierre Simoros from uh, Institut National de Recherche Scientifique in uh, Quebec City, and um, I'll be giving the next part. Um, so this is project 1B, building up on uh, what Taos just said. Uh, so he's um, kind of compiling everything except the geochemistry, because that's a project on its own. And Dr. Vite, my PhD student, is the main uh, person doing this. Um, also, his uh, co-supervisor is uh, Patrick Mercier-Langevin from the Geological Survey of Canada. And uh, here we go. So you've seen this map before. Uh, this version is from uh, Phil. Uh, there's a newer one. Uh, but the point is we have these um, seven sub-alkaline uh, assemblages. Um, and we won't be doing the um, volcanics in the um, sedimentary assemblages. Uh, there's a project 1C looking at, at that in part. So um, just as a reminder, these assemblages are largely based on ages and, and lithology. And there is some geochemistry involved in the definition, but not a great deal of detail. Um, so we cannot say at present that we know the geochemistry of each assemblage in detail. And for example, we can't easily compare basalts from different assemblages. Um, many of you know that rhyolites are often associated with VMS deposits, but that's not always true. And basalts are everywhere, so, um, and they've received far less attention. So we're gonna pay some particular attention to, to basalts. Uh, anyway, because of this lack of detailed knowledge on East Assemblage, we cannot directly link the composition and petrogenesis of each assemblage with VMS fertility. So as part of project one, which wants to identify unique combinations of geological events or conditions that correlate with VMS endowment, we're gonna compare VMS endowment with geochemistry and petrogenesis for each subalkaline volcanic assemblage within the EBITB greenstone belt. And we're gonna pay attention to all types of rocks from Kamadiite to rhyolite. And of course, including basalts and and undesired. So the first step is to compile all, quote unquote, which means a lot of, not all, uh, little geochemical analysis. And the main data source is the government databases, uh, OGS, and ERN, and the GSC. Also the middle earth transects, academic thesis, industry, um, and so on. So we want to put all of this together. And if you just look at CGM, the Quebec government database for the ABTB, you have tens of thousands of samples, but it's mostly major elements, right? Um, but we want trace elements in particular, um, some rare earth elements and things like thorium, niobium, and so on to do our, our favorite spidergrams. So we're actually only gonna compile the analysis for which we have a series of what we're calling mandatory elements. So major oxides and LOI and, and then these trace elements. And then we can use that both to look at alteration but also petrogenesis and discrimination of different types of rocks, preferably using ratios of immobile trace elements like in this Rasse uh, Bedar diagram here. The advantage of doing these immobile element ratios is that they're not affected by alteration. We're gonna work near in VMS deposits. So we want to be able to include altered rocks in our compilation without worrying about what alteration will do to the position of samples in each diagram. Um, and uh, we, 
are also going to acquire a few more uh, geochemical analysis this summer. And I'll show you why in a moment. Um, then for each assemblage, we're going to classify the rocks, composition, magnetic affinity, and so on. And we're going to create groupings or, or clusters using uh, existing diagrams, uh, new diagrams if need be, and then things like uh, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, and, and so on. And having done these uh, clusters, we'll be better able to interpret the petrology of each assemblage. Um, so that's for each assemblage. And then we're going to move to the belt scale. Uh, so which assemblage is more fertile? And what are some of the typical geochemical signatures uh, related to EMS deposits? This is the state of the compilation so far, uh, about 12,000 samples. These are only volcanic samples, except for this line here. Um, and we're still working on it. It's ongoing and it involves some students because we're digging into assessment files and old OGS reports and, uh, and so on. Um, right, so this is a map view of that compilation, each black dot representing a sample. We see that the uh, southern part of the Ontario is, Ontario portion of the ABTB is quite nicely covered and not so much the north. And in Quebec, there's a lot of information in the Blake River, in the Val d'Or area, Matagami, Chibougamau, urbain Barry, but less so in other areas. There's some particular gaps here up north. Um, the Quebec survey is going to work here this summer, so we're not going to go there, but there's other gaps that we might be able to address. Also, uh, the oldest assemblages, particularly on the Quebec side, are, are not strongly represented in the current database, so we're going to try to address that as well. Here's some results so that uh, you can see a little bit what we're doing. This project only started a year ago, so this is very preliminary. Um, I also like the Blake River as, as Stas does. Um, we had a nicely uh, compiled clean database from our previous MST project for the Blake River. So we started with that. And for now, we're just working on the Mayfecta intermediate rocks using a cutoff here on the Pierce version of the Winchester and Floyd 77 diagram. And that still leaves uh, 2,700 uh, data points. And so we, we're just doing andesite versus basalt on this diagram. And then on the Rassebedar, instead of doing toletic transitional calcaline, we ended up splitting it in four. Um, and that uh, was done so that the map patterns are more uh, consistent. So we want groupings that have some geological sense, not just um, plot together on, on geochemical diagrams. And uh, you can see what the spidergrams look like for the basalts and the andesites. So we go from kind of morb, normal morb, to something that has a good niobium anomaly, especially for the andesites. And that looks more arc-like. Um, if we put all of this on a Pierce 2008 diagram, we see that, see that our see that. source yeah. is somewhere between N-morb and E-morb. And with progressive contamination, we get to the calcaline rocks. It, it follows this sort of assimilation fractional crystallization uh, trend towards some sort of Archean crust, TTG, or David Mole calls it uh, Opetica crust in his uh, recent paper. Uh, so contamination seems to be quite important in the Blake River. Uh, remember, that's not even the felsic rocks. This is just the results in the in andesites here. And that's all I have time for um, in terms of the petrogenetic story. But now let's look at these groups on the map. In Ontario, we have a lot of the toleitic rocks in the lower Blake River here. Um, and then more uh, calcaline rocks in the upper Blake River. For the Quebec part, we've used uh, Jean Gauthier's uh, formations from the Hebeco to the Renault du Frenois. And I've put big dollar signs where there's a lot of ore deposits. So the Bousquet formation and the Doyon Lavon camp, the Horn formation, um, and then the Noranda formation. And we see that it's mostly the 
contaminated marbs or transitional rocks that uh, are prominent in these formations and not so much the uncontaminated marbs or the completely calcaline rocks. And so uh, we'll uh, see in other assemblages if um, the same pattern holds. The next steps, uh, we want to finish the compilation this spring. Uh, we don't want to fall into a trap where we spent two or three years just compiling and there's no time left to interpret anything. So we'll have to stop pretty soon. Um, we're going to expand our work on the Blake River to the Felsic Rocks also uh, within the next few months. Then we're aiming for three months of field work. Uh, the summer, that will be the only field season. And then um, until fall of 2023, we'll work on other assemblages and uh, link geochemistry with uh, VMS endowment. And uh, yeah, that's it for me.